we're going to talk about the four electric 12 string guitars on Sloop John B today. I'm going to play what all of them are playing on the record, and then you're going to hear like a guitars only recreation. And hopefully, you'll hear it in a new way. Just a quick word about the guitars I'm playing. I'm going to be playing on a Fender 12 and an Eastwood Mose Wright style 12 string. Now, both of these guitars, well, the Mose Wright and the, the Fender 12, were super brand new in uh, July of 1965. So, they may not have actually been playing on the original track, but that is a burning question in my mind. And of course, the story goes that Billy Strange didn't even own a 12 string in December of 1965. So, Brian bought him a Fender 12. Um, but then that sort of leads to the question, what was he playing in July if he didn't own a 12 string in December? Anyway, that's the kind of question that keeps me up at night. But here's the music. Okay, so Sloop John B is in the key of A flat and follows a fairly standard chord progression with the 1, 5, 4, and minor 2 chords. And the guitars all follow that. Um, and except for the acoustic guitar that enters later in the song, they're all playing arpeggios or sort of figured outlines of those chords. And I'm going to go through each part one by one now. So the main arpeggiated riff goes like this. just repeats that eight more times or whatever. So a couple of things about this riff that I wanted to point out. First of all, uh, it goes as I played it. I've heard some people play it like this, which sounds cool but isn't how it was played on the record. Um, and then a couple other things. When it changes to the five chord, it does that, rather than go down here to... Um, I've heard some people do that also. And then another slight um, thing to be aware of. It also goes down there rather than up to... Because that's reserved for the second part that was overdubbed later. And then on the final sort of turnaround, going back into the repeat, whoever plays that on the original tries a couple of different lines. So there's... And you also hear this one a lot. Well, that's the first part. The second part is pretty straightforward. It's just this octave hop and then a little flourish. Through all the keys, or all the chords. Now, you can play it a little more efficiently, like this. rather than switching your hand position. But I find that it sounds more like what they're playing on the record if you do that. It's very subtle. But I think it makes a difference. So then the final electric guitar part is this overdub, the famous overdub that was added almost six months after the basic track, and it's played up here.
So again, notice that when it goes down to play the minor 2, the, the B-flat minor chord, it starts outlining the, the D-flat, the 4 chord, but then switches to the minor chord. Notice that there it goes up, which makes it in harmony with what was played on the basic track. Which is why it's important to play those two parts differently. Uh, another interesting thing to note about the overdub is it's pretty sloppy, and sometimes, either intentionally or not, Billy Strange is playing... He's getting a lot of the strings. It's not a very crisp overdub. And it's so reverby and kind of an effect that you barely notice, but it is interesting how sloppy really the whole thing is. None of the parts are crisp all the way through, and I think that speaks to the sort of repetitive nature. It's easy to make a little blip there, but it's not worth stopping the takeover. Those are the... that's the breakdown of the individual parts. Now I'm just gonna run the whole track. It's kind of boring to hear the same thing over and over again, but maybe it'll have some value as some AMSR. I don't know. Enjoy. <laughs>